Hi there, welcome to the TD Cat Tech Studio. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a studio. It's actually a room that uh, doubles as an office and a dining room sometimes as well. But we'll call it a studio just for <laughs> the sake of this video. I thought I would uh, just show you around um, what I use to film and uh, the, just some of the equipment that I use, you know, to uh, to produce the videos that I do, just for those of you that might be interested. So, uh, well, I guess the easiest way to do this would be to uh, start over on the left-hand side here. So uh, this is um, a Parvo Tube 15C. It's a, it's a light that I use just to kind of uh, add some light to the side of my face. I usually put this on blue, or it varies. I just tweak around with, tweak around with my lighting a little bit, but uh, these are really versatile little tubes. You know, they just sort of mount in any which way you want, really. I've just got it mounted on the... Um, little plastic kind of just hooks around the light like that and on a on a light stand on a spigot there and um, then we've got I'm going to mention this because someone has asked me about this in the past the way this keyboard is lit at the back here this kind of tungsten up light if you like is uh, is just using a screen bar it's using a BenQ screen bar which is a screen bar is a light that's designed to sit on top of the monitor and light your desk from above it reduces like eye strain and stuff like that but what i've done with this is just put it upside down on the back of my keyboard to provide a really nice kind of central up light to the shot because i just yeah i just <laughs> think it looks nice and you can't you can't really tell it's just a sort of usb connected light on the back of the keyboard unfortunately it's really precariously balanced so if i actually play the keyboard i have to sort of move it and stuff and uh, then we've got the sound card that's used for any microphone stuff, any kind of um, screen caps and things like that. This is the RME Fireface UFX, really old one now this, but this has just been on for years. The display's messed up on it, it's completely messed up on it, but the, um, the actual sound card itself is still working 100%. It is an absolute... I mean, this was not cheap at the time. I think it, these, you know, these come in at about seventeen hundred pounds or something. But the amount—it's just—it's so worthwhile investing in a decent sound card. You don't need to invest that much. A lot of that comes down to I/O, but I would totally recommend it. It is an absolute essential part of your system, and don't, just don't scrimp on sound cards. Uh, the monitors here that I use are the KRK Rockets pretty standard stuff with a rocket the rocket fives and a lot of people use these i just i don't know i just pick them i don't know too bothered they just they do a job for me they they provide good enough sort of audio for my needs and i'm sure there are better monitors and but but they're, they're absolutely fine uh, they do what i need them to do and uh, all my video editing and everything now is done on a macbook pro i switched to a macbook pro in march of 2021 and i haven't looked back uh, I previously used a big desktop PC, which was power hungry, noisy, and performed no better than this does. So I um, I don't want to follow, you know, I know a lot of you out there probably sort of thinking, oh God, another Apple person. But I'm a total convert as far as this is concerned because I can do everything on, on here that I did on my desktop PC. So most of the time this this laptop sits in here, in this little stand here, and I work off this 5K monitor. It's actually a 5K 2K monitor, this. It's 5120 by 2160. It's not full 5K. It would be a little kind of, the aspect ratio would be a little higher if it was a full 5K. And then we have the uh, microphone that I use for screen cap stuff, and I use this mic for any sort of, anything that I isn't camera related, really. And this is the uh, Rode Broadcaster mic. And this is sat on top of a Mika microphone arm. A lot of people ask me which microphone arm this is. It's a Mika, Yellow Tech Mika microphone arm. Fairly stand, industry standard microphone arm. If you look at most, any kind of broadcast or radio station or something like that, you'll see these used all over the place. They're great. They make no sound when you move them around. Really, really good quality. Yeah, it just makes absolutely, you know, you can move your mic around. It just makes no sound. I mean, that's the main thing. Then I've got the uh, Rodecaster. Now, the Rodecaster is something that I use, I tend to use the RME. This is something that tends to get used in my day job more than anything else. So I won't go into that now because it's not really part of what I use on, um, on my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, so this is the general setup. 
You can see here that I've got the camera pointing down on a product that I'm about to look at. This is the uh, Movo UM300 desktop microphone. And uh, we'll move further around now. <laughs> this, this area of the desk is always completely messy. It's where all my cables get put and the, the stuff that I've been looking at or going to bring into shot at some point in the future. But you can see the actual kind of shot there on the Shogun Inferno. So this is the uh, 4K60P Shogun Inferno. Good few years old now this, but uh, still does what I need it to do. I don't need to capture any higher than 4K at this time. So records to ProRes and this is just, you know, your standard Shogun external recorders. Sorry, ex your standard Atomos uh, external recorders. Microphone wise on the actual uh, shot. So any shot, any work, any sort of piece to camera is recorded on the Rode NTG3. This is the older variant of the mic. They've changed it very slightly in recent years. This is, again, something I've had since about 2000, I've had this about 10 years now nearly, and it is just perfect for my needs. It's absolutely solid. It's just, it just never fails. You know, it is, again, worthwhile investing in something like this that you're going to be using every single day almost. And finally, really, I suppose, camera-wise, is, uh, is just my uh, Sony Sony Z90. This is the uh, PXW Z90. It's a small camcorder style camera, one inch sensor, no particular sort of, you know, everyone likes to have their kind of cinematic depth of field shots. I really don't need that. This is a camera that I can get my hands on and I can switch things around with buttons and stuff like that. And it just, it's small, it's compact. It sits on top of the, um, the Miller tripod. To be honest, the Miller tripod it's probably used to cameras a little larger than this. It's the camera looks a little small on top of the Miller, but this this tripod is again worthwhile investing in a good tripod, in my opinion. And uh, and that's that's kind of about it. Oh yeah, lights. Around here, you see that we've got the uh, the um, Venix LED 1000 lights. These are again lights I've had a good few years now, and they they do the job nicely. They're uh, yeah, I've just got two of those. I, will, I use one coming down onto my uh, face or onto the desk. Uh, usually it'd be dimmer than that if it was going onto my face. And one just to provide some lighting to the room, which again, if I was doing a shot to camera, would be much, much lower than that. It would be sort of more down here just to provide a gentle, um, gentle kind of background light in the room. Air purifier there just to remove some of the dust from this. Um, any room with equipment just gets so dusty. And uh, that's it. The whole room is, is, has got sort of these acoustic panels on the wall just to reduce all the reverb. So these are the, the uh, GIC acoustic panels, which I've, I've done a video on those in the past. And is there anything else to show you? No, I think that's about it. So there we go. Yeah, that's the, that's the setup. Oh, if I show you just over here as well, you'll see that uh, this, <laughs> this table here is where kind of stuff gets dumped. <laughs> basically when I'm not doing when I, if, if a box comes in uh, through the mail or something like that it just gets shoved on here and, <laughs> and just sort of and I've got a few cameras on there and stuff as well but um, yeah things just get dumped on this table now this is our dining room table it doesn't get used for that anymore because there's more important things to do with the dining room table and uh, and there's a there's a little naz in the background there just flashing away but uh, that's the lot. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the uh, studio. Oh, there's another Parvo tube down there too. I use them so just as a, to provide a bit of uh, up light. Oh, the keyboard's lit with LEDs at the back, of course. And then you've got this just down here, which I put on when I'm filming, just to provide a little bit of color coming up uh, on the shot. Fairly subtle, but, uh, but it just provides just gentle kind of touches of color. And there we are. That's about it. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. A lot of effort is made to um, produce a nice shot. And uh, I love just tweaking around with stuff and just try changing lighting and trying things out. That's a big part of it for me. It's not all about the making of the videos and getting the, you know, massive views and all this sort of stuff. It's just about the fun of making, you know, fun of creating a good shot and just doing nice stuff. So hope you found that enjoyable. I will uh, speak to you soon. If you've got any questions about any of the products, please do let me know. Uh, you'll find some of them in my, in my product, in my video descriptions. A, a few of the products are referenced in there with links, you know, to uh, affiliate, to support the channel, affiliate links and stuff. But uh, thanks for watching. See you again soon.